Hey guys, so this video is about lap time bias and length time bias and uh, I just want to say that this method of remembering this is taught to me by a really great professor, Professor Megan Healy from BUSBH who's really brilliant and I just want to give her the credit because this was her, this is her diagram that she's used to explain it to us and uh, I just hope you find it useful too because I surely did. So let's delve right into it. So before we can talk about the biases, I just want to take your attention towards this little thing here. So basically this is the DPCP or the detectable preclinical phase, which is the time period after a disease becomes detectable by screening, like a chest x-ray, blood test, and before the symptoms for the disease can develop. So this is DPCP where both the lead time and the length time biases occur. Okay, cool. So first let's talk about lead time bias and the DPCP thing will become even more clear. So lead time bias is basically like you have two people, let's say. Both of them died at the age of 50 from lung cancer. The first one, A, got diagnosed with lung cancer when he had a routine screening test at the age of 30, like he had a chest x-ray and they found a nodule in his lung. And the second person, B, got diagnosed with the disease at age of 40 from a symptom, like cough. So both of them got diagnosed. One got diagnosed through a screening test at 30. The other one got diagnosed through symptoms at the age of 40. Both died at 50. Now, lead time bias occurs because survival generally is measured from the time of diagnosis to the time of death, right? Time of diagnosis or time of death. So, lead time bias makes it look like the person who got diagnosed by screening test had longer survival. Obviously, right? He got diagnosed at 30 but died at 50. Symptom guy got diagnosed at 40 but died at 52. So it makes it look like the screening test somehow prolonged her survival of the person, when in reality it did not do anything but just tell you that you had the disease sooner. All the treatments, everything did not make a difference because the person still died if he had not been screened. So length time bias is more about the nature of the disease. So let me explain. So you have two cases again here. So the second case, as you can see here, has a really benign favorable form of lung cancer that is asymptomatic for so many years. So he gets uh, screen detectable at 20, but his first symptom only develops at 35. So he has a 15 year long DPCP where he has a chance to get screened and he's still asymptomatic here. So this person probably has a really good prognosis too, as compared to this one who has a very aggressive form of lung cancer and his symptoms develop right after getting detectable by screening. So like he has a DPCP of only five years. So this person is more likely to be diagnosed or identified as having lung cancer based off of his symptoms because they happen really quickly. The screening, the screening uh, time is very low for this person as compared to this person, right? He has 15 years to be screened. Maybe he can be screened three times and they'll catch the disease. So Length time bias basically happens when a screening test makes it look like there's an overestimation of the survival time, so our survival duration, because most of the cases that are screened and diagnosed through screening have naturally benign prognosis, benign cases and are good prognosis. So regardless of whether these cases get screened or not, they have really benign course and they have a good prognosis as compared to these cases which are symptom detected and have aggressive forms. So these are not included in this because the first time they get detected are through their symptoms. So length time bias is basically another way you can think that survival duration increases because of a screening test but that's only because the, the test detects those cases which are benign as compared to those cases that are aggressive. So this is the main focus of length time bias. And I hope you guys understood the difference between lead time and length time. But if you want me to give more examples and go over something else, please let me know in the comments and 
thank you so much for watching.